Good morning to you. Welcome back to the Morning Minute Meditation. Thank you for dropping by this morning. The Apostle Paul to his son in the faith, Timothy, makes this statement in chapter number four in the second letter of Timothy and verse two. He said, preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. The Apostle Paul said that the preacher's job uh, to the congregation of people that he's preaching to is to reprove them, to rebuke them, and to exhort them, and to use the means of long-suffering and doctrine. The word doctrine means instruction. And the only place the Christian finds true, genuine instruction is in the Word of God. So it is Bible preaching that helps the child of God. Verse number two, he said, the time is going to come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. That happened in many churches even before the end of the first century and definitely into the second and third. And we've seen a degeneration of wanting preaching all through the generation of the church. Why? One, one of the reasons is because if the church has been filled with lost religious people. And the Bible clearly teaches us that. Jesus said in the last day of judgment that many would say to him in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works. And Jesus said, I just, I never knew who you were. You never were saved. Though you were religious and did some good things, you never were saved. That's always been a problem when it comes to the church. People seeking solace in a set of rites and rituals, but not in the Redeemer. Now, as we continue in these verses of Scripture, the Apostle Paul goes on in verse number four to make this statement. He says, They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned to fables. Now, the statement is in, that is made in this verse is that they turn away their ears from the truth. In other words, this is a purposeful act. It's an act done by the volition of the will. They simply hear truth brought to them and they turn away from it because I don't want to hear what the truth has to say. If truth confronts me, I'm going to have to do something about it and I don't want to do anything about this. And that is the attitude of people, even in today's churches, uh, even good churches. All of that in consideration, let me give you this illustration. <clears throat> uh, a, a lady who had been a school teacher had amassed a good sum of money through years of squirreling away money and through her retirement. And a swindler called her asking her to invest and he was going to promise her a, a really good return on her money. She invested, not knowing he was a swindler, and needless to say, lost all of her money. It was then she called the Better Business Bureau to report this incident. The man at the Better Business Bureau said, Ma'am, did you not know about the Better Business Bureau before you invested your money? She said, Yes, I've always known about you. He said, Well, why didn't you call us before this happened? She said, I didn't call you because I was afraid of what you might say. I was afraid you might tell me not to invest here, and I really wanted to. Isn't it amazing? People will do what they want to do, even though they're taking a chance that it may be wrong. This is the attitude of people. They don't want to know the truth. That's why the feel-good churches grow by leaps and bounds, and little is said about sin or sanctification because people simply don't want to hear it. And many quote-unquote preachers have gone that way because it is prosperous and successful to do so. Hey, if you're a child of God, there is something within you called the Holy Spirit who is a lover of the truth. May you, my friend, be a lover of the truth. Hey, stop scratching those itching ears and hear the truth. Think about it, my friend. Have a great day.